Hey. Hi. What's up? Nothing. I'm still on the phone. Being an idiot. Uh, guys, just for the record, my brother's a jerk. How's it going? Uh, let me see. I feel like I'm quiet, right? Uh, what audio channel am I in? This one, this one. Check, check. Hey, how's it going? Is this better? Hey, um, what's up chat? All right, let me check you out. Sorry. Um, it's busy setting some stuff up. Uh, people are saying, oh, like, do you weed? I used to weed. I just think 420 is funny and I'm going to do some flying today. So that's why I put that uh the intro song was my own song. Uh that's what was going on with that. Uh I'm gonna put it up on SoundCloud. I have some songs up on SoundCloud. That one is not. Um, but I'll put it up. Uh thank you. Um I'm gonna have a really mellow stream today, guys. Usually I try and find something really fun, really like uh um crazy to do on my things but uh i found out yesterday that uh a buddy of mine from brooklyn uh passed away he'd been missing for over a week and uh it kind of sorry not to actually start out the stream with uh a down note but um yeah uh if you guys are interested uh in finding more about this guy he was a really cool guy uh his name was sam jane he was in a band called Love is Laughter, and my my very close friend Ivan was the bassist. Um, and I guess, I you know, I'm going to start out uh, with, like, a little story. Uh, and it's, it's actually interesting, like, looking at YouTube and stuff today, or not YouTube, uh, Instagram and stuff today. Uh, I saw a lot of stories about, or, or, like, people posting stuff about him. And he was just one of those personalities that... Uh, I, I think like a lot of people in that community uh, will miss and he kind of just touched a lot of people. Um, but yeah, uh, so this is a weird story. Um, the f I think this was the first or second time I met him. Uh, I was so if you've listened to my stream before, I've talked about how I've, I've uh, run the New York Marathon before and it kind of was like, I was very much not, I hadn't run a mile before, and then I started to, like, uh, train for it, and then in, like, 2007, I have the medal over there, in 2007 or 8, um, what year was it, uh, uh, I ran, I like sobered up for like six months and ran the marathon, and then after the marathon, I was like, uh, I don't know if there's a GoFundMe or anything. Like, it's it's pretty, like, it's a, they talked about it in Pitchfork. His band was pretty big. Uh, and uh, so there might be information there. But, um, so, yeah, so I, I was sober for, like, six months, and uh, I ran the marathon. And then afterwards, I was like, all right, I can drink again, and I can have nights, you know, I've taught myself that some nights I cannot drink. And this one night I went over Timmy's and we played, uh, like rock band with a bunch of people and I didn't drink and I was like, oh, cool. Um, you know, like, uh, uh, I'm having one of those not drinking nights. And then on the way, walking back to my place, my buddy Ivan, who I think he just got back from tour, he texted me that he was hanging out at this bar that was like on the way home. So I stopped in and uh he like immediately he, someone bought me a beer oh thank you so much bibbers 221 that's very nice he went off that's great uh so 
someone immediately bought me a beer and I was like, I guess I'm drinking tonight. And then uh, this guy that Ivan had been touring with came over to me. It's like 11 p.m. on a Tuesday in Brooklyn. And this guy comes over and he goes, uh, hey, uh, do you want some acid? And I've never done acid before. And um, he had a, a Visine bottle. And I was like very intimidated by it, but that uh, this other guy that I knew was like, was like, um, you got acid? And the guy gave this like sales pitch of like, oh, like this stuff is straight from like the thing with acid is the closer to the source you get it, the the better, you know, the more clean of a trip it is, the better it is. I'd done mushrooms before, I'd never done acid, and uh, I, yeah, I was like, all right, yeah, like. And this other, he was pitching it to this other guy, but, and then I was like, okay, you know, I'll try some. I've, you know, maybe it's like uh, mushrooms. And so I did some acid for the first time. Uh, and it was funny to me because it was like, I was like planning on it being a sober night. And, uh, and, you know, for like, until the bar closed, I would say it was like shrooms. And then the bar closed and then we went back to Ivan's place. Ivan lived in this, like, uh, this kind of, it was like a storefront, like a bodega that was turned into an apartment. And with this band, Vietnam, who you can also look up Vietnam, uh, and with some of Ivan's new bandmates. And that's where I met Sam Jane, and who's the head man of, uh, front man of Love is Laughter. And uh, we hung out there, like, all night in this store for like all night, like, like till the break of dawn, like, uh, and it was, it was crazy. It was, I remember there was like one moment where, uh, like somehow this, this, uh, Hannah Montana sticker like came into the mix and, uh, Sam Jane was like, uh, um, was like started saying Hannah Montana as far as like like an adjective as a way to like describe like he was like oh man that's Hannah Montana like not like that's Hannah Montana but like it's like something that's really really good and I was we were like all so excited about that and I remember like you know it's my first time and I was all like and I was with these like guys in this like really cool band and I was like oh yeah it's so fun. like I feel like and I kept on talking and he just turns to me and he goes hey man you don't have to narrate and there was this thing where like it was like oh yeah I can just feel it and I can just go with it and we started sitting around and we started having these moments and the funny thing is like someone said uh, psychedelics are entirely personal ex experiences uh, and it's funny that like they, it is a very personal thing, the things that you're going through and the thoughts you're having, but like at the same time, there's a very like con weird connecting thing. Like everyone like will all of a sudden get shivers at the same time in a room and like, uh, and I connected with these guys and it was like this really weird wild night that I'll never forget. And then at like, uh like 10 in the morning everyone was kind of going their own ways and uh i think i was locked out of my apartment and i had to wake wait for my roommates to wake up and i went back instead of going back to my apartment i went out to a diner and uh by myself and it was weird because i was like so excited about this night and i kind of didn't want to go to sleep and it was like this very exciting thing and then i went into a diner and i, I realized that like the one thing that's different about a diner and where I was just coming from is when I was at the diner, I was the only one on acid that I knew of, but, uh, yeah, no, I was the only one on acid and, uh, it like immediately freaked me out. I was like, what do I do? I was, and so I was like, all right, quick, I bought a paper and I looked at it and I was like, I can't read a newspaper. I'm tripping. I couldn't like focus on it. But then for some reason I could focus on, um, the, the box scores of the, the baseball games. That was like the most normal thing to do was like, look at the box scores and be in awe of how these numbers were events. And, uh, the waiter came by and he was like, 
um, what, what, what do you have? And I just did like an imitation of a breakfast order, like a, of a uh, some pancakes and some uh, eggs and uh, bacon and a coffee and uh, and like just like rattling off bre- breakfast items. And like I took my order, was like everything was cool. I was like passed the test. I thought I was in the clear. All I have to do is like accept my food and then get the check. And all of a sudden the waiter came by and he slammed down this uh, glass of orange juice. And I didn't order orange juice. And this I had this thought all of a sudden where I was like, oh my God, like orange juice is like an acid thing. And then the glass at the same time was like a very small glass of of orange juice and I all of a sudden had this thought that there were all these waiters in the back and they were used to this and they were like they were like oh we got a tripper at at table five oh give him the orange juice and uh (laughs) then I had a moment where I like grabbed myself and I calmed myself down and I was like no it's it's uh uh it's it's not that it's just I ordered an assortment of things that equaled a combination on the menu and that combo comes with a glass of fresh squeezed orange juice and flat fresh squeezed orange juice is just you know like it comes in a small glass that's you know when you have like in new york diners they do that and then uh uh i i kind of brought it further and i was like you know and just like orange juice just happens to be what goes well with acid because sometimes the universe provides and sometimes things align and and life is just life is crazy and as soon as i had this thought life is crazy as soon as those three words i had to count for a second those three words rattled around my head i heard the the latin dance sensation live in la vida loca and my mind just about melted there was like something about the world that came together in the universe that came like where i asked the universe a question and it felt like it answered me uh and i'll never forget that and i, I couldn't go to sleep for like a whole nother you know i couldn't sleep that i thought I would, i'll just go home and i'll go back to sleep and i sat in darkness and that was very horrible but uh it was uh uh oh yeah Th- don't worry there was another half hour of that acid story uh no um it was like a, a crazy event and uh it's funny like thinking back about this really cool guy who uh, that just happened to be like the beginning of knowing him. And, uh, he was always like, uh, 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 when I lived in New York was like a really nice guy to see. And I'm sure if you like, if you know some indie musicians and stuff like that, look around at their feeds and stuff. A lot of nice tributes are going out right now for him. And if you haven't ever heard of him, you should check out his music, uh, love as laughter. It's really great. And, um, it's um so sad you know uh it's such a bummer so that's why uh today it's gonna be a mellow uh flight night um and we're gonna and oh this is my other thing um so again like sam jane rest in peace you're such a cool guy and um yeah um so one other thing oh yeah if i find out about any gofundme that his family is doing i'll make sure to post it on my instagram or mention it uh at self suck saturday uh i also saw something else this week i'm just gonna throw this out there and i'll try and rate him as much as possible um uh mc chris it was a very cool guy who was I think one of the first times i saw it so he just started doing twitch and uh i think he could uh check him out i think it's mc chris does twitch and i think he could uh use the support and so if i ever see him on i'm gonna try and uh 
throw to him and uh he was actually funny enough uh and i think you know i've mentioned this before is like the first time i saw trevor was at this open mic night i was like in college i was like 18 19 and he performed at that show and afterwards they uh i didn't go to the bar with with trevor i went to the bar with this other friend of mine that night and that guy uh we went to the bar. I was so underage and, um, he MC Chris was cool enough to like hang out with us. And like, it was like a very cool thing that, uh, and I, you know, we've, we've hung out with him since then. He's always been a really cool guy. So, uh, I'm going to try keep an eye out for him, give him the follow. Uh, and yeah. Um, oh, and also, um, I saw a lot of positive feedback on the, the sketches released this week. Um, oh yeah, Flicka is so cute. Flicka! She loves hanging out here with me. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna to take some callers, but first, I want to talk about what my new project is. Let me transition over. Okay, uh, so my new project, you guys can't hear this, right? Let me know, give me a shout when you can hear this. I think it's, let me see, it's on one of these. Oh wait, I think it's this one. All right, yeah. Oh, there we go. You guys can hear that that thing. All right, great. Um, so take this off studio mode. My new project that I'm doing, not just like on screen, but also off screen, is uh, I am uh, the new sketch. Uh, uh, sorry, it's not a new sketch. It's a, an old sketch that. Uh, with the commentary, we did a um, sniper business. Uh, so what my plan is, is I plan, oh, it's too loud, okay, let me turn it down for you. So I plan on flying around the world on and off stream. So you guys aren't gonna see I'm just trying to get the, the volume right for you guys. Uh, so you, you, you're not gonna see every little bit, but I, you know, sure, slowly and surely want to fly around the world. I started in Boston. Um, my SoundCloud, uh, I think it, it might be Sally Draper. The album is dot, 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 dog dick. Uh, like ellipsis dog dick um, so we are going to set as a departure Chicago O'Hare uh, and then so so I started in Boston I went to New York and then I went to Pittsburgh and then I went to Chicago uh, I'm still trying to get these landings down let me see, I can go to Minneapolis, but I kind of want to hit up Denver eventually. Maybe I'll go to St. Louis. How, how long is this flight? Set his arrival. 44 minutes. I do want to see the arches. Uh, why don't we do the St. Louis? I'll see the arches. Um, but then we'll go to, like, Kansas City. We could just go straight to Kansas City. Uh, it's Wichita. Let's do this. I, you know, like landing's fun. Um, let's see. Let's set the. Uh, we're not going that far. We'll do. Uh, let me see if it's short or high off it. Oh yeah, it's way shorter. Um, but let's take it from. Let's take it from a gate. Let's 
This is like map, like in your Google Maps when it's like, you want to go this way, it'll take this long or this way. Alright, so I gotta get, go from this gate, get over here, to runway 28, take off and take an immediate left. Um, let's see, what am I going to do when I land? Alright, that looks... I mean, wouldn't it be more direct if we go 24? see it coming in. Uh, thank you, Funtoon. Uh, fly to the city of Mu. Mm. Uh, and yeah, once I get up and once I get in the air, I'll start taking some callers and we can talk about, talk about the life and about how weird the world is, you know? 34 minutes, wow, I still have a lot of time by showing that direct flight. Uh, so we'll do that and then we'll figure out where, where to go next. And um, let me look. I can do skins. I'm doing an American, or just to go with the American theme, I'll see if I have a. or liveries. Uh, I'll see if. Yeah, let's do an American. Airlines Air. Alright. I, I want to do during day. It's, it's just easier. To, it's cooler. Alright. Hype train. Uh, let me see if you guys hit level 5. I'll do something. I'll definitely do something. Ooh. Let me see. How's, oh, oh, while this is loading, I think it's hurting my frames. I'm going to reset that once we get into it. Cheese Whiz, thank you for the sub. Oh, my network's dropping some frames now. Uh, hopefully this will go well. <laughs> Your other Trevor Moore was confused. That's funny. What were you going to tweet at him? Hot Sauce Airlines. Thank you. Who's on right now that just allowed that? That's a good comment. I, I, you know, I don't like that, like, 9-11 something either. Like, I just think it's, like, I get, like, I've crashed my plane into something uh, a bunch of times. But, like, just calling it 9-11 and something, it's like, ugh. And like, also, the, when I'm crashing my planes and some stuff, I don't think of it as like a violent act. It's just kind of like, oh, I'm looking at the map. Uh, Succubus Sally, are you gonna, uh... Oh, crazy. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put you on this time. So you guys have to let me, you guys have to bear with me because I am going to um, I'm going to uh, anyone see the huge WikiLeaks dump today? No, I did not see the huge WikiLeaks dump today. Uh, what's up? Um, I got I gotta go through my pre-flight and get the plane in the air before. 
we can take off. Let's see. Oh yeah, the radio is off right now. Let me go over here. I'm just gonna go to my checklist. All right, I gotta start my engine, or before starting the engine. Let's see, battery switch. This is, I fucking love this. Uh, you get, I think two battery switches, let me see. Yep, battery one, two. They're on. So I'm going to check that off. So I can, if I wanted to, look at these things. External power, only if available. Uh, I'm trying to... External power. Check. Engine bleed air switches. Fault displayed, okay. Check. Engine bleed air switches. On. Wait, oh no, that was the generator. Oh yeah, that, that's what engine. Oh, here it is. Oh, wait, no, that's already on. APU master on. This is the tricky part. Uh, so you go check and APU start. Now I gotta wait until the APU start says avail. Um, press my top. People make COVID jerk. use the Konami up up down down I mean look like I could like just look at all these stuff but I'm trying to learn this stuff here's the thing Iron Hyman is like you know maybe and maybe uh I'm missing the context of what you're saying, but uh, I think, you know, I think when we started, we definitely were very, like, kind of like, hey, like, let's, you know, like, say stuff edgy, edgy, let's push the boundaries, and uh, I think just, like, like, it's gotten, there, I think there are boundaries. I think it's 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 better to to figure out boundaries and figure out how to navigate them than just trying to like trample them and act pretend that there aren't boundaries and pretend that there isn't a context of things. So, all right, so this is a veil. If you start. Oh, wait. Uh, oh. Oh, wait, wait for, oh, oh, APU bleed, that's what I want to do next, it is good. And just, you know, like with anything, the, like, easiest path is probably not the right path. Unless you're talking about electricity and it's the path of least resistance. resistance. Uh, but, you know. So you got to figure that out. I mean, all right, so, all right, Par Paratron says, do you think that change in how you view your old work and current work was internal or an adaptive? adaptation of the times 
it would be nearly impossible to get 80% of your content released today. I think the 80% is a bit of an exaggeration uh, as a new show. But I think like the thing is, is that the stuff has a context, and I think the thing is, is that we if we made a show today we like if we hadn't made a show and made a show today yes we would we would do different sketches and we would do our sketches in a different way but still i think have a lot of the same essential like the the spirit of things but there definitely are things that we wouldn't say and definitely like you know things we would say because it's the i mean at the time a lot of the stuff there is like a way that stuff holds up but at the same time, we're, we're commenting on society with what we're saying. We're not being like, hey, this is social commentary. And in fact, a lot of times we like kind of like, uh, we like step in. A lot of the times we like make fun of that, that kind of commentary and stuff and like, like try and, uh, um, you know, like, not take anything too seriously but like i you know i think with anything you have to like think about it and you have to think about the context of it and you're never truly like protected from anything you know you have to like think about the message you're saying and and for me it, it's it all it, one of the big parts of it is that it's not just like offending people it's it's encouraging the wrong people that that's what really gets to me like you know like that's that's a shitty feeling and that's definitely happened to me where I've said a joke and someone's like I get exactly what you're saying with that joke and it's like oh you missed the point and now you're gonna be like feel like your worst impulses are embraced by other people and um yeah um I digress though I think I should wait to talk about that another time uh did i turn the external power off um i want to do this sometimes where i get an actual like uh airbus a commercial pilot to come on the show and tell me what i'm doing right and wrong uh fuel pumps on tell me like why Oh wait, that, I think that was the wrong thing. Oh no, that was the right thing. Uh, beacon? Uh, uh. Alright, so this stuff's... Yeah. I have to do this just to like get this here. Uh. And like again, also like this stuff. Like, uh, yes, I have done stand up. This thing, this stuff, like all shifts, and it, it there is a, a pendulum to it. But I think you know, like considering what you're saying and making sure that they're they're that people can see the context of it and that you have a majority of our, your audience that sees the context of it is always good practice. Um, do 
I know what I'm doing. Sand 420 heavy, could you please send the catering truck? Sand 420 heavy, the catering truck is on the road. Sam 420 heavy? You gotta make sure that there's... Oh, see, this is the catering truck. They're getting us our meals. I'm engaged. Engaged to be married. If there wasn't COVID, I would probably be married. Uh, look at this, this fucking truck. I want to look flight 420. Yeah, why does Kids You Know present by, and we'll do like some like in-service like thing where we like, all right, make sure to have your tray tables and seats in the upright position. And then we do like a stomp thing, like pop, 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 pop. Um, all right. Let's see, I want to request a pushback, but I guess that's not something I can for right now. Right. Ground Sam 420 heavy IFR to St. Louis ready to copy. Oh, I guess I have to get. Sam 420 heavy is cleared to St. Louis airport as filed. Take off runway 9 or right climb and maintain 13,000 feet. Departure frequency is 125 decimal 0 squawk 6152. I gotta say things Sam back. Sam 420 heavy back. cleared to St. Louis Airport as filed. Look at this, this is Take cool. Take off runway 9 or right climb and maintain 13,000 feet. So in some point. Departure on 125 decibel 0 squawk 6152. Fucking. Sam 420 heavy read back is correct. Contact ground on 118 decibel 05 when ready to taxi. Uh. 
South Sam 420 heading with India ready to taxi IFR. Sam 420 heavy taxi to and hold short of runway 89 or right by a taxiway Sierra 1 Tango cross runway 28 center Tango cross runway 28 right Tango Bravo Romeo Tango Romeo. I don't know what that Contact means. Contact tower on 120 decimal 75 when ready. Alright, so I think I'm supposed to go... Okay. Alright, shit. Alright. Taxiing holds short runway 9 or right using taxiway Sierra 1 Tango cross runway 28 center Tango cross runway 28 right Tango Bravo Romeo Tango Romeo Sam 420 heavy. 9 R. Alright, but I need... Ground Sam 420 Heavy requesting pushback. Sam 420 Heavy pushback request accepted. Let's... Guys, we're getting ready to fly. Uh, I wish you could play VR on this. That'd be freaking rad. Yeah, Skybus, bus in the sky. That's like the, the brand, though. It's like, that's like the... It's not a uh, Boeing, it's a Skybus. Requesting pushback tug to steer the aircraft to the left. Yes. Sam 420 heavy, your request has been transmitted to the operator. For some reason, this pushback thing is so crazy hard. Like, Ground Sam 420 heavy, requesting you just have to end pushback. You can't control Sam it. You just have to tell heavy them what to do. To end pushback received. not messed around with Xanax. Xanies, Zabars. Uh. Okay. Let's uh, speed up a little. Uh, the new Bakers and Myers will be recorded uh, on Thursday, tomorrow? Tomorrow, Thursday? Yes. It'll be tomorrow and hopefully released. Uh, Sam 420, heavy hold position, caution, other traffic. Oh, jeez. Sam 420, heavy, continue taxi. Oh. Sam 
Think about it like when you're on a plane and they're like taxiing, around. they're like driving around in airports, and those are fucking big. So I had this problem with uh, takeoffs where um, I was, yeah, this is my runway, 9R, uh, okay. set my flaps to a 1. I just have to remember to put those up. I had this problem where I kept on like crashing the plane. It turned out that there is this uh, parking brake on. There is this throttle position. You can only have it like this for. Zero heavy and runway nine are right ready for takeoff IACR to St. Louis. You can only have it burn at this. Heavy cleared for takeoff runway nine are right. This much for uh clear for takeoff. You can only have it burn like this for five minutes or it's gonna blow up. Oh. Cleared for takeoff runway nine are right, Sam 420 heavy. Decibel zero for Sam four two zero heavy. I'm stalling. See if it does this first turn. Sam? No. 
airplane. Uh. No, this is my show. This is my fans are depressed losers. And that's something. No, I put the flaps down. It was fun. Thanks for that. Who plays who plays Microsoft Flight Simulator here? Sorry folks for the turbulence. Alright, is no one no one? get this Forget to do that, that's when we blow up. So maybe that's what I need to do. Wait, no, I need to do that. Oh, I'm sure.
this guy. thing is that like if I was doing this right I want the fucking plane to take over for a second. Alright, there we go. Good to fly. Okay, wait. Guys, I killed us all. I overstressed the plane and it killed us all. <sighs> Great. Not a good day for me. I, I why wasn't the autopilot turning on? Yeah. 
All right. I'm gonna take off again. I'm gonna just this time. I'm gonna back out. I'm gonna take it from from the runway so we don't have to start it over. No, I didn't final destination you. That was the, the vision you got. Now you can choose whether or not you want to get on the plane. I don't know why. I, I'm still trying to figure out this this uh, autopilot stuff. Uh, the, the fly in the plane isn't that hard running like turning on the autopilot kind of is and you kind of let the autopilot fly it for you I've done it where it's just like I'm just hanging out I was like on my phone and it's really nice this is actually kind of what I you know I get anxiety and I get like uh, stressed out and this is this is one thing that like really kind of centers me a little bit there's like a serenity to it except when you're fucking you got however many people are in this chat on your plane and you fucking beef it. Which is bummer. Alright. I'm gonna take take a caller. I'm gonna so if you wanna talk you can call in on the uh if someone could do me a favor, that's uh, if there's anyone from that Discord that's willing to invite people in. Uh, hello. Alright, I'm pulling my, uh, Succubus Sally in. Let me see. Uh, she's on mute right now, though. Succubus Sally, you're on, by the way. Oh, this might be a bad time. Dave Foley. Ron Gina's got it. Ron Johnny, I thought you played this game, no? Who is it that plays it? Where? Where the frick am I? Oh. Oh, I'm in Europe. Okay, there we go. Chicago. Air International, set departure, runway, and I do 9R. This is where we were before. And then we're going to Lambert International, set as arrival. No, not this. We'll do a high altitude airway. 43. So this will be a 43 minute flight. Oh wait, but this is the other thing. It's arrival. What is this? Twenty-four. See how much time we just took off our flight by arriving at. Hey, Succubus Sally, can you hear me? Hold on, wait. Uh, where are you in here? Oh, oh yeah. Okay, yeah. But you can't hear me. Uh, I can hear you now. You and, can? Yeah. Chat, how's your volume? Oh, perfect. Awesome. Oh, your volume yes. is super high. My volume's uh, super high? No, no, it was on my end. Oh, sorry. Uh, 
Hey guys. What's up? Well, fine. It's, yeah. You, you, you were on here once. You started a, I know. a, a mini meme. Uh, that's, what, <laughs> that's what we call them here. It's a yeah, Austin I'm Powers uh, Dave reference. Foley. Yeah, Dave Foley. Dave Foley herself. Yeah. Succubus Sally. <laughs> Yeah, Dave Foley is also a succubus. Succubus. So everyone oh know. yes, that's the <laughs> connection there. The succubus and kind the, of. the evil. That's good. Evil. Yeah. It's evil. I've met all those guys oh, yeah. except Bruce. Bruce is the only one. Oh really? Yeah. Were they all cool? Um. Yeah. I mean, I've met some of them more than others. Like. Scott and Kevin, we've had like like pretty extensive conversations with. I've done a couple shows Tower with Sam four two zero heavy ready for IFR oh. departure <laughs> runway nine or right. Like just different instances, not like. Sam four two zero. But no, I mean. Yeah. It's it's weird. I, I mean, like I think it, I think they're really great and. Yeah. I remember. I seen them live. The first time seeing. Uh, um. Uh, uh, a kids in the hall sketch and like not knowing what it was what was the first sketch you saw first sketch i saw was the gavin and the mormon sketch and there's one beat <laughs> that i fucking love in that which is when the mormons they kind of give their whole spiel to gavin and they go like can we come in he goes yes and they they look at each other like there's no one's ever said yes before <laughs> he was always so positive. And I just I think it's the funniest thing. I saw I saw Brain Candy in theater with my brother. I remember that. Oh, I love Brain Candy, uh, even though Dave always like barely in it. Yeah. Uh, I think I think Brain Candy's great. I, uh, actually, I heard something about like the original script, and I was like, oh, that'd be amazing. Which is like originally there was this whole subplot where like one out of ten people became like a serial killer. <laughs> and then like that would have been a great. I I think that movie is like three quarters of it are like perfect, which is like so unobtainable to like make a movie that's three quarters perfect, and then it just kind of ends. The ending kind of like yeah. It just kind of like they're like, how do we end this? Okay, we, we just end it. Uh, but look at Chicago. Um, Ooh, is that Chicago? Yeah, we're taking off from Chicago. Here, let's put our. Oh, sweet. Sam 420, heavy contact. Chicago departure on 126 decimal. Wait, where are you flying to? Uh, St. Louis. Oh, shit. I'm so bad at geography. Which way is that? Uh, Six decimal six two flight for Sam four two zero heavy. Oh, okay, so St. Louis is in Michigan. No, Missouri. There we go. Okay, yeah. I went to public school. Sorry. <laughs> I also went to public school. Oh, I went to really bad public school, <laughs> and uh, I also missed several. People. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, St. Louis. I got bit by a bird in St. Louis. Uh, what? Trevor, Darren, and I did some shows in St. Louis, and uh, the thing with St. Louis is there's a free zoo in St. Louis, and so one day we had nothing to do. We were there for, like, you know, like, when you do, like, comedy shows, you usually, like, if you're not on a tour, you'll do, like, weekends in a place, and so we did, like, a weekend run in St. Louis and had a day where we had nothing to do, and go to the free zoo and at the zoo there was a lake in the middle of it and uh like like this like little pond and there were birds like exotic birds you know have you ever seen those like they look like swans but with like huge tumors on their noses whoa um geese <laughs> I, no uh, you, you did okay. you did go that, to school huh uh i swear you did <laughs> Uh, they're, they're like weird like exotic <laughs> birds and uh, I remember one of them had like they all had their wings tagged with numbers on them and one of them had a, oh. a, a, 
you know, because they're zoo animals, and one had a oh right, okay. uh, uh, a thirty-three tag on him, and I was like, huh, that'll make a good Instagram post. I'll take a picture of him and post uh, Larry Bird. Uh, huh. Larry Bird, the basketball player, was number thirty-three. Oh yeah, I know. I know who Larry Bird is. And I didn't know his number was thirty. And I'm taking, I'm taking a picture. I'm like leaning over to take a picture of him, and I look over, and one of the birds has his mouth wide open and just snaps at me. And I got my hand away just in time, just so that he got me like just a little bit. And then um, I he got nipped. I got nipped. And then I remember. So later that week, I you know went back to California and I went surfing. And when I went surfing. I uh, was wearing boots, you know, like you wear like uh, little like wetsuit boots, and I stepped oh, yeah. and I got stung by a stingray. I like it, like I felt the, 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 it felt like I stepped on a rusty nail in the ocean, and like it was a stingray, like put its tail through my boot and got me in the what? foot, and so uh, I took care of it. But then that night, I was like. I gotta do. I gotta make sure I'm okay. And so I went to the doctor, and I was like, "Yeah, I got bit by an exotic bird and stung by a stinger." And the doctor laughed at me and went like, "Oh, you're not having a good time with uh, nature, are you?" <laughs> I was like, "That's not professional." Dude, that's not. Dude, you almost died like fucking Steve Irwin. <laughs> I mean, it was a very small stingray, so. Oh, okay, but it, it stabbed you though. It stabbed me in the foot. It's pretty hardcore. I've never been stabbed by an animal. Oh, you haven't lived. I no. Well, I lived in Florida, so I'm kind of amazed that never happened, or that I was never eaten by like an alligator or something. Oh yeah, that's the place where it's gonna happen, right? Yeah, they just kind of snatch people up. Okay, guys, I think we'll see if the plane stays level, but it looks like my autopilot's kicking in. Why do you look outside, like, the the right-hand side of the cockpit? <laughs> Why do I look outside the right-hand side of the cockpit? That's what it looks like from where I am. Oh, oh, I was looking at the center cons- like, here, wait, it's this- these controls- Oh. Uh... This is, like, the weird thing about flying is, like, where I realize, like, with smaller planes, you, like, fly, you know, like, with your, like, eyes to, like, look at where you're going. With these big planes, it's all about, like, these control panels, and, like, I'll go down here, I'll look at this thing, and, uh, so you're on a delay, you might not have to look at, uh, let's see, let's see the flight plan, 31,000 oh, feet by RBS, so I come up here, and I look at, like, where am I going, uh, no, that's not, that's the right thing, this is the scale of this little, like, right. so I gotta fucking get up there, so I'm gonna increase this to 32,000 feet. How many knots are you going? I'm going 140. I'm pretty slow right now, actually. Oh, damn. Oh, I used to work at an airport, and uh, everyone said it was just, like, mostly automated. Yeah. Wait, why am I... So this is really intense. <laughs> Damn, I would have loved to see that. <laughs> it just goes to black. It doesn't do anything. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I watched last time when you crashed, and it was kind of disappointing that, like, nothing happens. Yeah, uh, it'd be, it, they, I remember these games used to have, like, fun little, like, but, uh, I, I played one a like... long, long time ago that was, like, VR, and I crashed in it, and it was, it felt insane. <laughs> I don't know if that was flight sim or if it was like 
particularly for VR, and I don't remember what kind of VR my friend had back in the day. It was like 2015-ish, around that time. So like not as good as it is now, but still pretty good. I am not a huge fan of VR. That's what I'll say. I might have said this. Oh wait, hey, rest in pizza. Thanks for that sub. Um, this is like, I'll say this is like, uh, VR is like so gimmicky to me. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's other people. Yeah. That's why. But like, I think there's amazing video games that are so that like this, for example, is like so immersive feeling. And this is like this would be a perfect game to have VR for, but. It's not the VR that's going to sell me how good this game is. Like, this game is good before the VR. And I, I guess, like, you can, like, yeah. increase... But I just think that, like, we're never going to get there. We're never going to... Not, like, we're never going to, like, perfect VR. But it's such, like, a, an ask to, like, have people... I just think that the, the the device, the like thing of like, yeah, everyone's gonna buy these helmets that they have in their home and they're gonna have this space <laughs> in the living room where they're just gonna whip their hands around and stuff like that. It's just I, I, I don't think it's a very practical entertainment system. It's not. But it's funny that you mentioned that because I know other people have talked about that before, how you need like a ton of space for VR, but I have a friend who does uh she does VR chat like all the goddamn time and she has the tiniest apartment and it is so cluttered and there is no room in there and she's, she's in, in VR every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, she's just becoming part of the Matrix, I think. <laughs> yeah. The stacks. Uh, ready, ready Player 2. I started listening to that. I, I'm like, hate listening to Ready Player 2 on tape. Uh, I didn't like the first one. And I was like, you mean the book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I want to, I, I want to like, exp I'm not going to like read Ready Player Two. Oh, you can't hear me? Wait. Yeah, you are cutting out like a little bit. I'm, oh, oh, am I getting too far from the mic? Is that it? I think maybe that's what happened. How's this? Am I good now? Check, check. Much better. Although right. I'm hearing you in Discord, so. Okay. Uh... Ronjana says too far from the mic. <laughs> okay, too far from the mic. Uh, what happened? Justin Ronjana. What, what, is, what <laughs> happened? What is going on with my autopilot? Oh, no! No! Like, jeez, I, I was like, I thought I was on autopilot. I thought it was good. And now all of a sudden, I'm veering way off course. Sorry, guys. It looks like you're slowly turning over, <laughs> which is scary. You see that little, like, blue and brown thing? Yes. The That's, uh, I think that's my attitude? That's what they call it? Wait, what? Yeah, they, they call it an attitude, which is, like, how your plane what? Altitude? Is... No, no, attitude. Uh, which is okay. how your plane is uh, oriented. It's like if you're level. Uh, I'm going to take your word for it. So. Let's see, the autopilot's still on, so it should be kicking in. Um, so, do you have any questions? Do you have anything I can help you with in your life? Oh, yeah. I got, uh, I got on to get advice um i wanted advice on like bad roommates how do you deal with bad roommates uh, bad roommates uh, it's a tough situation oh, yeah. i mean like um is it like truly a bad roommate or if it's a friend and you have differences um definitely not friends i uh 
didn't know these people before they moved in. Oh, multiple, uh, but my friend, they're a couple. Oh, okay. I so see. yeah. Oh, um, that's tough. Yeah. They just. Uh, I'm just. It's not like super bad because I've definitely had like nightmare people before, um, and I wouldn't say this is that level yet. Um, but it's definitely amping up to be. <laughs> it's getting contentious. Yeah, there's like some weird stuff going on. It feels like maybe trying to stir up drama for absolutely no reason, which I don't understand. Well, you know, there's always going to be like conflict. There's always going to be like whatever, especially when you're ever like if you're whether it's like a job or relationship. Or, like, there's always going to be something your life where you need to like yeah. you have a difference in opinion of how things should be from another person and sometimes you know like if it's a friendship if it's a relationship it's something where it really you know like it deserves you to like grow to make something work but yeah, and I, I'm definitely, like, try to be, like, a very patient person. In fact, I can feel like I can take a lot, usually, because oh, totally, um, yeah. I put up with some shit in the past, and, uh, but I probably shouldn't have, and I realize that now. But that's also, like, the weird area of being, like, so am I still just putting up with someone's shit, or should I say something? Like, what point do I need to be, like, hey, knock this shit off. But yeah, this is exhausting. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's, like, is, uh, especially with, like, roommates the the interesting thing is it sorry I keep I'm backing up we can wait I can change it but <laughs> I think it'll sound worse uh, I think this sounds pretty good um, so like yeah like you know with a roommate situation it's like how 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 much are you willing to, to do how much are you willing to accommodate and you should be able to like, it, you know, like, live in a way... Because, like, if, if something's bothering you, if something is truly a problem, it's not going to go away. If something, like, you know, like, your opinion's not all yeah. of a sudden going to change, it's just you're, like, you're dealing with it short-term, and eventually that'll, like, bubble over and it'll be long-term. So, you know, maybe you're in a situation where you're like I just have to I have three more months on my lease and then and I, I'm well, saving up money and it's worth it for me kind of the opposite. to get out of the situation where, uh, where you have a long time and so you're we, stuck there and you have to like yeah so no not like stuck here I actually really want to be here my friends own this house and uh, they let me move into the bottom half of it uh, so I have the whole bottom floor to myself oh. which is awesome do they, um, do they... And they live upstairs. So... But I share the kitchen. You guys share the kitchen. Yeah, and the living room. Like, essentially, this is my house. Um, I just pay rent instead of, like, actually owning it. So what kind of agreement do they have on the, the house? They are month to month. They are month to month. Like, they... Yeah. Do you... They pay monthly, and then, um, so it's a month-to-month -month lease, so if any time they don't feel like they want to live here anymore, they're free to move out. They don't have to, like, I mean, I would ask that they give 30 days notice, and I think where I live legally, uh, yeah. in order to evict someone, which you can't right now until December 31st, uh, you have to give them 30 days notice within city limits. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, uh, well, they, but, like, I think, you know, the thing is, is, like, is... What are you willing to deal with? You know, and it's like, if something is bothering yeah, you, if they're not, like, doing their share of housework, if they're leaving things a mess and stuff like that, like, you bring it up because it's like... Oh, yeah. You're not willing to, like, you'd be like, it's... hey, you guys need to, like, do more. This is, you know, like... That's, that's the really hard part of this is because they... She cleans, like, nonstop. So this house is spotless, which is nice. Yeah. Um, and I super appreciate that and they're good about paying rent and bills so I have no complaints there um, it's just this weird like third party thing of like hey let's go talk to the neighbors about some shit and like just stuff that I'd rather not be involved in oh like um, they're like 
like, yeah, trying to get me involved in some stuff and like also saying things that I don't like hearing. Um, and they also, and this, oh, is, I... this is the big one, they burned mail. They burned mail? Yeah, that's illegal. But like, it's one of those things that's illegal that how do you get caught for that, right? Who's like, checking? wait, like they burnt like other people's mail that they stole or yeah. they like got no. mail accidentally delivered to them and they're like well let's get rid of this and just throw it in the fire so there's like a lot of people who have lived here in the past because the landlords used to live here and they moved out recently um, and then I stayed here but yeah. there were other people in the past who lived here old roommates who like maybe updated their address and USPS just isn't delivering their mail still yeah, totally. so sometimes they still get it and then the landlords themselves have uh, dead names that they still get mail for, and they can't stop that from happening because yeah. they changed their names legally. Um, and so I, I informed them, I was like, hey, don't, don't do that anymore because there's all kinds of mail that comes here for the landlords, and, you know, it's not going to be in their name necessarily. Yeah. But I guess I don't, they said that they stopped doing it, but I'm now mail is missing, so I'm like, I don't know. They're just throwing stuff. Away. I can't prove anything. Well, careful. Maybe. I'd right? say careful like like yeah be careful with your, your the th thought process that you're going down right now i think like they're and i'm not like doubting what you're saying at all but be careful to <laughs> to like be like they've done this in the past and they're definitely doing it because like you know oh they told me they told me they did it yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but this like, wasn't like an assumption I made or anything. They just straight up told me that's what they were doing, and I was like, "Whoa, what?" Yeah, but I mean, like, if you say like, "Hey, don't do that," and they're like, "Okay, yeah, we won't," and you have no other yeah. proof that they're doing that, just be yeah. careful because that can like build a lot of tension with like you know like being like, "Oh, I know they're doing that," and all of a sudden you're like you have legitimate stuff to to legitimate gripes with them doesn't help things to like to assume more than you can take on and deal with does that make sense yeah yeah that makes sense I'm always, that's what I'm like, definitely I, trying to like ratchet I always have head. to you know be like careful with my own impulses in those situations where it's like oh I hate this person and like I always have to be careful <laughs> to not throw more stuff than they deserve on them because that kind of pu yeah. pushes things to be in this place where like you you know like where it's impossible to get back from because all of a sudden you hate them for reasons that they don't like that they can't really put a finger on and and now all of a sudden they have reason to like you know there's animosity there you know and it's just, it just becomes a cycle so just be careful and like i'd say like take care of the stuff that you see as like you need this done to live this way. Yeah. Like, if you need your... All right, they're clean. What, uh, if you need to, like, stay out of conflicts and stuff like that, be like, hey, I don't want... If you're fighting with the neighbors, you're making things harder for me, and I, I want you to respect that. And, you know, I think... I think that's a key thing is respect is like you gotta like put yourself out there in like a fair way to like have like fair uh uh requests that like are ways that this person can show you that that uh they respect you and that they respect you as a roommate and not that like they need yeah. to do what you that's... say but I, right. part of living with people is showing each other respect and respect for what they do yeah, definitely. I still gotta, like, get them to understand they don't need to come through to get their clothes either. <laughs> they don't need what? Which is like... They, so it's a split-level house, and yeah. um, I was having people go into the garage to, like, do laundry, because that's where the washer and dryer are. Yeah. And, uh, but you can also go through my room to get there, but this is my room, so, like, I don't want people to just come into my room for stuff. Yeah. Which I think is sensible. It makes sense, right? No, totally. Yeah, you're um, allowed your own privacy. Yeah. Right, and they are very, like, apt about not going through the garage um, and definitely wanting to come through my room instead, which I've had to, like, ask not to, and then it still happens. So, like, that's why I'm like, 
it's really hard to get respect from people yeah. who like just don't listen. No, I I think like like that, and that's a total thing of like guys, don't do this. I don't want to ask you again. Yeah. Like yeah, things are gonna get worse if I have to ask you again. Oh yeah, somebody else was in here saying they wanted to get on chat. I don't want to take up everybody's time. All right, no problem. But this uh, is a good call. <laughs> oh, can I plug my Instagram? This totally. would be the best time yeah. to plug my plug your Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> Go right ahead. I am succubus underscore Sally. Succubus Sally. Thanks for all the support, by the way. Uh, know, yeah. Oh hell yeah! Long I donate every now and then. Yeah, long time listener, first time yes. caller. Yes, long time listener, long time listener, first time caller. It's like, I'm gonna go ahead and hang up and let, listen to who, you. Who 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 should I let in next? Oh, uh, what was that person's name? It started with an L, but I don't know if they were in the waiting room. Lee? I just saw them in, Lee? in Twitch. Was it Lee? There's a Lee in here. Uh, I'm gonna look for him. Holy shit! <laughs> right. Who was? Oh, there they are. Elp. What what was it? L. You keep cutting off. Okay, now it'll work. Sorry, I was hitting Control T to talk, and it was opening oh. new tabs everywhere. Their name is L. Pearly. Are they in the waiting room? There's a Lee in here. I'm just gonna do Lee. Well, John is trying to figure it out. All right, cool. <laughs> see ya. All right, see ya. Lee, you are on with Samaritan Airlines. How's it going? Oh, pretty good night. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I think this has been a nice, relaxing flight. Uh, we'll see how I do with the landing. Nice, uh, nice. I'm actually go ahead. I'm excited that the, I'm finally getting like the air, the autopilot and stuff like that on. I don't know why it wasn't. I've never actually played Microsoft Flight, uh, Flight Simulator. Uh, it's I popped in. I was watching you play it. It's fun. It's cool, man. That part earlier where I turned on the plane was like one of my favorite parts of the game. It's <laughs> like now I'm like, hey, if the pilot has a heart attack, I might be an okay choice. If the pilot and the co-pilot both have heart attacks, maybe. You're gonna step in and be like, I have a hundred hours logged. Yeah, yeah. Guys, I'm not great at landing, <laughs> but I'm good at trying. Okay, how much fuel we got left? I can keep us going until then. <laughs> this is the fuel used, this is that that gauged, just so you know. Um, I know how to turn the plane on, but it's already on, so that's not really important. Ooh. Huh. Are these all the fuses? Jeez, Cray. Yeah, it's cool. You can like, you can really like flip on really anything. Hmm. There's so much. Uh, not anything. There's so much. I guess there's also mods you can get. Where you, uh, what? What? What's your name? My name is Brandon. Brandon. But your yep. handles Lee. Brandon. It's my Lee. middle name. Yeah, my dad. Uh. My dad really liked Bruce Lee. <laughs> Didn't want to call me Bruce. So he named you after Bruce Lee's son. Yep. And then Bruce Lee's son died. Yeah. Hoping not to follow suit with that, but... Yeah. Well, how many action movies have you been in? Oh, uh, unfortunately, none. Okay. I'm sure if you see some security cam footage, you'll find me, but... Uh, no, it's <laughs> a lot of underground stuff. All right. Nothing big name. Chill, chill. Let's see, where... Yeah. Oh, Fargo's coming up. Uh, oh, I need to start descending. Are you using a mouse and keyboard, or are you using a flight stick? I am using a mouse and keyboard and a dual shot controller. Huh. I always thought you had to like invest money into like some serious hardware to get into these. Uh, I would like. To, I. I mean, I would like to get. There's like a forty dollar. Uh, Logitech stick that's looks pretty fun uh, that would be cool but you know like 
again, most of this stuff is, uh, uh, is it the autopilot tools? Well, yeah, most of the stuff is, sorry, uh, is set in the autopilot tools, so it's like, uh, so do you have a, do you have a, a, a life question, Brandon? A life question? Yeah, uh, anything I can help you with? So, like, I'm trying to do, like, a Frasier thing, you know? Like, Frasier on a plane. Oh, I see. Uh... No, I'm pretty, pretty emptied out on questions. But you got any piece? Got a good piece of advice? Just life in general. Uh, what do you do? I'm an EMT. You're an EMT. Wow. That's cool. Where are you at? Detroit. Detroit. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Fun times, right? Any good EMT stories? Uh. All the best ones you are easily identifiable. So unfortunately, okay. Hippo right. says I can't. I can't share them. All right, that's cool. That's cool. I understand that. Um, but hypothetically, um, I had my first CPR the other night, so that was great. Oh, nice. I'm sure if you just start hitting buttons, start hitting buttons, you'll eventually hit the ground. How far are we from our destination? Oh, we're coming up on it. I definitely need to... Alright, you know what? This is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Approach mode. Chat's getting a little dark. Alright, there we go. Now we're, now we're descending. We're descending like crazy. Ooh, that glare is not good for us trying to live. Uh, oh man. Uh, yeah. Control of the plane, guys. You got a dog? Yeah. Dog named named Flicka. Flicka? She, she's a Carolina dog, yeah. That's cute. Yeah, she's How cute. old is she? She's five. Good age. Yeah, good age. No longer a pup, but still got some life to him. So do you watch the other shows on this channel or, or are you just a fan of Sam's? Sure. Sam's show for depressed losers. I don't what I don't much watch uh, Twitch anymore, but I'm starting to get back into it. I, this is one of the first streams I picked back up. Oh really? Yeah, my friend, my friend left and joined the whitest kids you know Discord. Said, "Oh yeah, we're waiting to talk to Sam," and I actually got to talk to got to talk to him before he did. Oh, who's your friend? It's uh, JD313. JD. Unmute yourself, you rat. Oh shit, now I'm here. You, what's up, oh, JD? God. Maybe JD has oh, a problem my... that we can solve. Oh, I... Dude, I got a lot of problems. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I can't wait to oh. hear him. This is Sam's show for depressed losers. Well, you're in the right spot. Uh, JD, what's up? 
Uh, nothing much. Just enjoying the stream. I just want to say thanks for uh, having me here. Uh, it's <laughs> nice to talk to you, Sam. Ah, nice, nice to have you. Are you also an EMT in Detroit? <laughs> oh, no, no, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, that's too much responsibility for me. I work at a auto parts store. I sell parts. Oh, do you know a lot about fixing cars? Oh no, not at all. <laughs> oh really? But you just sell the parts? You just look them up in the book and be like, I guess this is the part you need. Yeah, yeah. I just look. You come in and you know what you need. I can get it for you. How? If you try to describe what it is, you're probably gonna get the wrong thing. Or do you tell them that? Are you like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I gotta be honest with them. Yeah, that's true. Oh, you're better than that. <laughs> I actually used to work with him. At the he auto was my boss. Store? Yeah. Uh, do you know how to fix cars? Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. I have a 1999 shitbox. All right, I got a question for you. Uh, oh yeah, like and that, like it's like if you want to use the, if you want to own this car, you're gonna have to learn how to fix it. Um, Pretty much. Fargo's at 21,000 feet. I think I passed Fargo and I'm just like fucking supposed to hit St. Louis. Alright. Um, so my question is I got a question for you guys. Maybe you can help me. I like fixing stuff. I like making stuff. I like, you know, like uh, when I'm at home, like if something's broken, I like trying to, to be the one to like put it, figure out how to, how to get it working again. And I'm pretty good at it. Like sometimes I can get stuff working. It's part of the reason um, I was almost playing Cyberpunk Rugger Dogs. That was almost what I was going to do on the stream, but I thought it would be nice to to do this. Right, sorry. Um, so my question is: is if I ever was like, I've got some time, I've got like, I'm, I'm not doing a job, but I want to learn more about fixing a car. Is, what's the best way to go about that? Are there like community college classes I can take about automotives? Do I just like start watching it, YouTube videos? It depends on how you learn. Like, do you learn better watching, reading a book, seeing someone else do it? Do you learn better getting in there, getting dirty, breaking I, it, fixing it? Probably breaking it and fixing it. So what you do? Is you find a car, truck, bike, whatever you want. You have to pick a good year so it's not too expensive, but also to where there's a bunch of parts readily available from aftermarket stores. A Honda Civic. So about, yep. Domestic is better, but Hondas are also pretty popular. I heard that's like why like Hondas are one of like the most like, uh, uh, the people steal Hondas the most because the parts are are so like. Uh, it can be a pain Inter to get some uh, actual. Yeah, it can be a pain to get actual, like genuine parts too, depending on where you're at. It's glaring. But it's killing oh, me. Oh, like, the ray tracing is killing me, guys. I'd say go for like a 2005, 2006 vehicle, and if it's got some problems to it that you know of, cool, start hitting them. If not, drive it around till something starts to bust. So you say if you need to brake job, you can learn to get into brakes, learn how to bleed them. There's little just minor everyday things you can do to it to that's supposed to be a part of regular maintenance, but chances are if you buy an 05, 06, somewhere along the line someone gave up hoping that vehicle and just decided to drive it until it broke down and sold it to someone else. That's true. I, you know, I once had a, a like a 2004 Jetta. When I moved to LA, I bought a 2004 uh, manual Jetta. Six cylinder, maybe it was a four cylinder, uh, and it was, it was always something was broken on it. Yeah, yeah. This 1999, I tried, I tried taking it all the way from Michigan to New Hampshire to visit my friend, and the transmission blew up on the highway in New York. Ooh. 
I mean, blew up. It sounded like a banshee screaming at me. It was terrifying. I mean, we told you that was gonna happen. You did. Yeah. You did. But, uh... Sometimes friends are right. Yeah. I hauled it back, fixed it, and now it's back on the road again, and... I paid two grand for it, and I probably put two grand into it. So... Nice. Hey. She works, got four-wheel drive, and it stays warm in the winter. That's all you need in Michigan. Why am I contacting Kansas? I, oh, am I going to Kansas? I thought I was going to St. Louis. Oh, yeah, I was just about to ask, where are we going? Kansas where are we City flying? Center, Sam, four, two, zero, I, heavy is out of 13, we're supposed to be flying to, for 7, to feet. St. Louis. And, yeah, we're going to St. Louis. I don't know why I'm... Sam, four, two, zero, heavy, Kansas City Center. Continue Contact. as planned. Altimeter, two nine or decimal nine or two. So two nine two, that's the the um Sam four two zero heavy, you are one nine or miles northeast. Descend and maintain five thousand feet. Expect ILS runway, two four approach, via super transition. Alright, just tell me to clear to Zuko. Descend to five thousand. Um just texting me. Alright. Well, thanks for this time. You guys gave me the advice. Uh, it's been good talking to you, but uh, before I land, I want to get another call in. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, thanks for having me. Thank you for flying Samarica Airlines. Thank you. Descend and maintain 5,000 feet. Expect ILS runway 24 approach via Zuko transition. Clear to Zuko Sam 420 heavy. Uh, Sam 420 heavy contact approach on 13 2 decimal 125. Hey, Mr. More Mango. Knowledge handoff. 132 decimal 125 for Sam 420 heavy. Mr. More Mango, you're in the the, the chat. Mr. More Mango. Fuck, Sam. Uh, yo, what's up? What's hey. up, man? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Okay, there it is. Shit, sorry. Apple profits. What do you do with that? Um. All right. Cool. What's up? Come on. Hello. Trying to slow down. Tell me about it. It's the end of my semester, so I feel you on that. Oh yeah, so. what semester of what year? Uh, my my uh, sophomore year. Uh, my second uh, my first semester of my sophomore year. So yeah. Oh, nice. So, How are my we? brilliant attempt, though, because my school's math department is just god awful, but, Ooh. you know. Uh, so, where, what can you do? Where are you going to school? Oh, just local community. But after that, I'm planning on going to um, uh, a place called Montclair State University. It's in a. Uh, it's in a place where a fellow uh, whitest kid was born in Montclair, New Jersey. Oh, Trevor. The Montclairs. Yeah. Mm. It's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm from Jersey. I, I live in Jersey. I'm like 40 minutes away from Montclair, so. Oh, Garden State. Yeah. Do you like, do you yep. big fan of the boss? All right, I am not. Uh, I'm not making this landing. Uh, what? You mean, uh, Murphy? Uh, I am... Wait, why is this... A 
Approach SAM 420 Heavy is climbing Weather. through 3,600 feet for 5,000 feet. I am flying directly SAM 420 over this. Heavy Approach, continue as planned. I said boss, I meant, you know, Bruce Springsteen. Oh, I thought you meant, like, our governor, because, like, in the chat, like, everyone, uh, like, we were talking about, like, um, our governors before, so. Mm. Yeah, I think it's safe to, like, avoid politics just to keep the uh, the peace. I think that would be a good, good thing to do, so. That's tough. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, he's... he's... He exists, you know. I I, I like I, I like a few of his things, mainly because this girl I liked in high school, um, uh, she liked a few of his things. So I'm like, yeah, Bruce Springsteen. He he's uh he's awesome. I get that. Her her mom was also my art teacher, so I'm like, oh damn, I really got to do good things. Oh. So I'm really screwed if for some reason she's a Whitest Kids fan and she's watching. She's oh. like, damn it, I knew it. I knew you weren't a so, boss fan. I I saw one of Bruce Springsteen's last shows at the Meadowlands before they tore it down. Uh, he did like a week of oh, shows shit. called The Wrecking Ball. And, oh look, there's St. Louis in front of us. Uh, but he did a week of shows called The Wrecking Ball. And um, there was one show, uh, each show he did like an album. He did two shows for Born in the USA, two shows for, um, um, what's that song? Um, uh, the one with Thunder Road on it. Um, is that, that other big song? Damn, 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 damn. Baby, I was born to run. Born to run, yeah. So he did, that, yeah. did one show that was Born to Run. And then he did, or two shows that were Born to Run, and then he did one show that was Darkness on the Edge of Town. And I went to one of the Born in the USA nights, because it was a friend of mine had tickets. And I don't know if that's the one I would have chose, if I could have chosen, but still a great time. I, I remember the Meadowlands. It, like, I ride past it, like, on the train, and... It's like I haven't seen it like ever since I went to a hockey game there. Um, heavy, you know, 1, so it's like I totally altitude. never paid attention Climb to the fact that they. Were, I think you're talking about what like the DC guys on The it's the the um now it's a, it's in it MetLife where the the Giants and the the Jets. Play. The Giants, the Jets, yeah, yeah, because yeah, like the Devils, they um they used to play there, but now they play at the Crew Center in uh, North. Um, yeah, so what? Uh, yeah. Oh, so what? That was probably what back in the early 2010s. But like, I remember yeah. my sister went to a concert there. Climb and maintain 5,000 so. feet, San 420 heavy. But, yeah. Oh, wow. So. Um, Guys, we have a little flight happening right now. One thousand. But yeah, just finishing up with here. Like I said, um, <laughs> I'm good. I have to turn the autopilot off. It doesn't give you like full controls when you give autopilot on. Uh, and I almost crashed the plane. Get us up to five thousand again. Let's let's do another run at this. I was teaching my brother how to use uh, cruise control, and we almost hit my mailbox. Ooh. Um, and the beamer. So that would have been a very expensive accident. A humble brag. Yeah, it's it's a no set. Don't get too excited. So. Uh, here, let's go. Well, guys, let's let's see what's going on. In St. Louis, we'll, we'll 
check out the arches. We'll, and then we'll fly back around and we'll land this thing. Um, so do you have any life advice that I can give? Any, any problems? Any like, you know, uh, this is Dr. Fraser Crane. I'm here. I'm listening. Uh, What's Dr. Fraser Crane's slogan? He doesn't have one, does he? Uh, Hi, I'm Dr. Fraser Crane, and I'm a stuck-up bitch. Uh, I will say, you, um, it's the, some advice that I, you know, I don't, I don't even know if it's advice, but it's kind of something I just kind of wanted to say to you guys in general. Like, you know, I know, like, you and Trevor. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you, if you actually had me on your, uh, your election stream back in November. Oh, really? Yeah, I was uh, I was the magician. Oh, yeah. I remember, I remember yeah. talking to you. Yeah, like, uh, how could I like the that. Magician? Like, I'm like, I told my girlfriend, I'm like, you wouldn't believe what just happened. I'm like, oh, she's like, holy crap. And I, I just, like, I know everyone's 2020 has been shit and everything, but it's like to each his own type of thing, you know? And it's just like with everything I've been going through, like my grandmother passed away and we oh, had to sell I'm her so house sorry. and everything. Yeah, and I just so realized what's happening. Descend and maintain too, five thousand feet. I didn't feet need to bring up death zero, behind like, no. everything that's going on in your life too. I just realized what I said. I'm sorry. Man. Oh no, no, it's totally fine. Um, that's what it is. But you know, it's like we're like going. We're like a few days prior, we were going through our house and like looking through like old stuff, and like it was like really emotional for us. Yeah. So I'm sure you can hear. I'm getting a bit upset. No, totally. But, it's but I'm going to carry on. Over it's so um, weird. Over speed. Just over speed. So it's That's just way weird. Speed. Right? Like that is weird. But yeah. Over speed. And no, I mean, hey, look, my dad. My dad's an undertaker. You don't have to tell over us speed. about weird oh, yeah. in depth. So. Over speed. Um, over speed. But like over it. Speed. Uh, like it was just over like. Speed. Over speed. It was just like. Over speed. Like, I'm religious, so like. Over speed. I call it what you will, you know, but. It really was, call it God, call it plants and lightning, call it whatever you will, but like it really was just what I needed. And it was like, uh, oh, God. it was just, yeah. it, so I know it was random, but at the same time, just thanks so much, guys. It was really, I'm saying guys, it's just you tonight, but, but in terms of advice, what can I give? Um, I mean, I, Back in 2013, I dealt with some really shitty depression, like so much so that um, I let it literally become crippling to a point where it controlled me for about a good three to four months. Um, it got to a point where it was affecting my attendance at school. Oh. And at the end of it, I got to a point I said, you know what, no more. I'm not going to let this control my life anymore. I am done with this. I'm disgusted with it. And ever since then, I just got tired of being afraid. And, you know, ever since then, I just, you know, started uh, telling myself to not be afraid of anything anymore. So anytime I've ever been intimidated by a thought of fear of anything, I just attempt to stare fear in the face with it. Of course, if it's not life threatening, like yeah. going, you know, diving out of a plane without a parachute well i yeah. think we know how that's going to end but you know it's like you know uh, i can't think right now because i'm thinking too fast but like something logical like i don't know studying and you only manage to study for a test for like 10 minutes study who knows maybe you'll pass maybe your professor will let it be open notes who knows what will happen you know yeah um i totally get that and, and let me just say I'm sorry to interrupt, but like, it's, it's like this no, thing cool. of like, uh, it's, you, we don't realize how easy it is to overwhelm ourselves and how easy it mm. is to like put too much of, of the world in front of us. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like, there are moments where I feel like, like, anxiety and depression and also like I 
think another thing that really ties into this whole thing is um, it's like productivity is like because like it's all linked into like just like getting something done and if you can if you can do what you're saying and like stare things in the face if you can like like take things on and say like yes like I'm gonna do this thing you can then start to think about just what do I do next? And that's mm. such an important thing to ask yourself. It's like, what's next? Like, what is the next step? Uh, and, like, I don't you know, I talk, I talk about this too much, but, like, with, like, the marathon, it was like, all right, what? I can't run. I don't run. I've never run a mile before. Well, what's the next step? Well, it's it's buying some shoes and it's running a mile. Okay. Well, what's the next step of running a marathon? Well, all right, I've got this this plan and it's it's four runs a week and um, it's you know like it's what can I do today to achieve this big goal of like running twenty six miles. Well, I can run my my you know my four mile run today, and then when it comes time, I can Sorry. Uh, I'm just I'm just saying like it, you can take things one day at a time, and yeah you can start to think about like how can I achieve this uh, how can I achieve this thing by taking like writing a book writing a movie script how how do I write a movie script you know like it's not like how do I write an entire movie script today it's like how do I write like five pages today if you can write five pages a day you can finish a draft of that script in 20 days and that's it's pacing you know and and like yeah and and but like if you look at it and go like uh, how can like how am i ever gonna write you know 90 pages of a movie 100 pages 120 pages of a movie it's like oh you just like decide that it needs to be done and there's so much stuff in life that is it's like that's so much like how do I pay off this debt how do I sign up for health insurance and it's just doing whatever you can do to start to achieve your goals and like that's what whitest kids was was like it wasn't like we like one day we're like hey uh we've got this sketch show it was that we started this sketch group and we like Honestly, like, like, when we started the sketch group, at the end of our first semester, we did one show. And then in the next year, in the, the first semester, we, we did uh, two shows. And then we did, like, I think two or three more the, the, the following semester. And then our third year, we were like, all right, we can do, like, three shows a semester. And we kind of kept to that schedule. And, uh, and then after college, we got this live show where we did a show every week and we wrote every week and it was just like all right what can we do today and it wasn't like we got we got a tv show even though like when we got our stuff we got we were pretty like unknown and there were i'm sure a lot of people that were like who are these guys but we were working on it for years it's it, it, I, I, I made myself think too much. No, I don't even know what I was going to say. But I mean, I guess from like the outside, it's like people do, you know, overwhelm themselves into thinking like far too much, and they think like, well, if I can't do it, then no one can do it. So how are people doing it? That's impossible. Yeah. You know, it's like. And here's another like, another thing to think about too with any of these things is like nothing happens like 
like sure there are these crazy stories about like someone sitting down and writing something and it was like perfect and they're super talented but a lot of times those stories are embellished and you know a lot, like we like to like I think we like stories like that that we like to talk about the the myth of genius because it makes it so that it gives us an excuse of why we didn't do more with our with the time we've had on this planet we're like oh this is just something that wasn't ever achievable for me but you know and the truth is is like did you really try that and that's like i'll tell you with like tv and, and movies and stuff like that there's this weird kind of like thing surrounding it where it's like I don't know, like, I, I, what, there's, like, a thing where it's, like, I've gotten people from, like, my hometown who've, like, sent me messages, and they've been, like, dude, I've got a great idea for a movie, this is the movie, and I'm, like, yeah, cool, you should write that, and they're, like, no, that's your job, you should write that, and it's, like, no, oh, God. that's something that you just came up with, that, that, like, you think is good, and you have this vision for. And well, I guess they wanted to do it for like free or next to nothing. Yeah, or they they would like think like, oh, you write this. All I've said the idea, all you know, like profit off of it because it was my idea, and then we'll be a writing team where you write it. And it's like no, but that's how it's it like, is. But it's like the thing is, it's like yeah, maybe that is a good idea, and maybe that's like like maybe you can be a writer, but you need to 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 write if you want to be a writer. And that, that's like, it's, it's totally possible for you to do this stuff. You just have to like apply yourself. It, it's, you know, I have this app on my phone because, um, you know, I, um, like I have ADD and I don't mean like in the cute, like 14 year old girl on like Twitter, like oh, I have ADD because like that's so trendy nowadays. Like, like it's literally hard for me to do like pretty much anything like I have to remind myself to like take my like epilepsy medication um because I don't know why I just opened up about myself like that I am sorry that got no, no, it's fine. anyways um but anyways no like I do that and um it's this app I'm not like I didn't create it. I'm not being endorsed by these guys but if you have an iPhone it's called streaks and they it, it's like a reminder app but it like works with like um by rewarding good behavior for you know people that have a hard time just doing some of yeah. the most basics of tasks like brushing their teeth or making their bed or anything and you know just by causing them to do it because it, it it's like hey look you you did the thing congrats yeah all right and it made it press the button and it makes a little noise and then if you do all your tasks your screen like turns gold and it's like hey you had an awesome day today and all the notifications fall off your screen which everyone likes to see yeah and and encourages good behavior it's like hey keep it up yesterday you did if you keep it up if you, if you do it tomorrow you'll you'll keep your streak going you'll break your streak you'll keep going yeah. you'll keep going and it's like oh it's kind of like the duolingo thing it's like oh don't do it you'll you'll break your streak you know and it encourages me to do it like for me, like, I know it's the cringy thing of uh, the app of uh, TikTok. I will be the first to admit it. It is cringe. I use it, but the reason being is I've heard from so many magicians that use it saying that they use it, and they saw, like, a boost in their bookings. Like, this one magician saw, uh, he said he had a, book, a boost of, like, uh, an annual boost of, like, 5,000 bookings oh, wow. within a year of just, of just posting like like just basic like visual eye candy tricks with this tiktok so i'm like all right i gotta get this app you know yeah so i have a, i have a reminder on my phone to post a tiktok and i just have a streak of me doing just just visual eye candy tricks on my tiktok and it's like that easy it's like I, i'm like all right yeah for the for like the average person it's like you go on 45 seconds bing bang boom okay cool see you tomorrow for me it's like i'm like okay all right it's like I climbed a mountain, you know, just to get it all done. And then I'm like, all right. 
And that's and you see you so know. many. I think we like to like see other people and we see the things that they do and we go like, oh well, they're good at that. And the thing is, it's like it's okay. We all have our struggles and we all have yeah. these things that we're dealing with. And you know, you'd, you'd be surprised. I think it's good to like communicate this stuff with people too because you realize like, oh, someone who I thought this was like so easy for, turns out they have a hard time with it too. It's just like an effort thing, or, you know, like, it's just like... It, yeah, like, we're not alone, which I thought. Yeah, totally. And you realize, like, oh, like, you know, you're not made less than other people. It's just, you know, it, it's just you, you haven't done the work of you know, maybe there is some stuff that doesn't come as easy to you, but it's like these people also have stuff that you're good at that, that doesn't come, you know, it goes both ways. Like, you know, for me, um, like, you, you just you just said, like, like it goes both ways. Like, one person's good at one thing, one person's good at the other thing. Like, for me, I'm not going to say, like, I'm a comic genius. Like, I do write comedy, I do have comedic moments whenever I perform, but I'm not a comedian. After, you know, the whole quarantine ends, I do want to perform a set. Uh, I do have a lot of friends that are comics. Uh, like, uh, do you know Derek Hughes, by any chance? He's like a friend of Nick Swartzen, uh, Adam Sandler. No. No, no. Okay. Anyways. His, his Twitter is uh, Comedy Magician or Comic Magician. He taught me at... Uh, it's going to be a pretty preachy sentence here. Buckle up. He, he was one of my counselors at Magic Camp. Oh, but, wow. uh, Yeah. yeah. Um, you, should, you should grab your underwear and pull it really hard. Uh, yeah. Give yourself a wedgie uh, for that one. Uh, don't worry. Way ahead of you. But anyways, no, but, like, he taught me, um, he and, uh, Harrison Greenbaum and, uh, Michael Carpenaro, they all taught me, uh, oh, crazy. like, stand-up. Uh, oh, you, you know Michael? Is that Carbonaro effect? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know him. Oh, okay. I know of him. Yeah, I, um, they, they taught me, like, uh, stand-up when I went to Magic Camp, uh, when I was younger. And, like, they taught me, like, the, like, the bare bones of it, and it's like, they're like, people think that comedy is a lot like how other people think magic is. It's like, oh, you have a deck of cards, boom, you're a magician. Yeah, like, totally. No, it's like theory, there's sleight of hand, there's trial and error. It, just because you know how to make a person laugh doesn't mean, mean you're a comedian. That's like saying... You know how to do CPR. That doesn't make you a doctor. It's like people well, like automatically assume these things. You know. True, it's, but also at the same time, like you know, like it work. Yes, but also at the same time, I say like you know, there was definitely a point where I was like, hey, like asking comedians, I was like, what would you like to be? like yeah you just are a comedian you write comedy you're already a comedian like i remember you know when like doing white skits for years and working with these other comedians and being like hey what's it like and the truth was is that i was a comedian because i was writing comedy and like the and that's not to say like oh it's easy to be a comedian but like it it is easy to be a comedian like it doesn't mean much to be something it means so, a lot to like be good at something you know it means a lot to like make the thing you want to make to master a craft is, is, is the it, 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 you gotta work at it yeah you gotta yeah. work at it yeah any of these things and that's what it takes is work 25. it takes a, a willingness to be to be bad I have a stand up friend who once said this is something I always like. He said, uh, there's two moments that make a stand-up. The moment that you go up in front of a crowd and you 
making people laugh with something you say, and all you want to do is go back and, and do more of it. And then, the moment that you go up in front of a crowd, you say a joke, and no one laughs at it, and you still want to just go up and do it again. That's being a stand-up. I... It's like, it's failing, but like, having the willpower to like, you know, do it when it, and that's like, I always say this, is like a hobby is something you do when you want to do it. A hobby is something that you work at when you feel like working at it, like, if you're like, oh, today I'll, I'll pick up my guitar and I'll play guitar, but like a career, a job, is something that you do when, when you don't want to do it. It's like, you know, like, even if, you know, like, making this TV show, like, when Whitest Kid's like, oh, what a cool job and it was a fucking really cool job but it was like there was definitely days where you're in it and you're like I gotta go to set today and you're like oh this sucks I wish I could sleep in and work work off this hangover and yeah I mean like like that's the thing all right. I, I've I've had gigs like that too. Like I've um, like did you ever see the movie The Incredible Burt Wonderstone with uh, Steve Buscemi and Steve Carell? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Where he's like, I I'm in magic hell. I can't stand this. I'm in magic hell, and he's going on stage. Oh yeah. yeah. Like I like Will Ferrell or no? Who was no uh. Steve Buscemi and Steve Carell and Jim Carrey. Oh, Jim, Jim Carrey, Carrey was, was like the Chris Angel. Yeah, 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 that's what I was yeah. And like, I, I remember I was late to a gig once and I was driving, I was like speeding along back roads to get to a college gig. And I'm like, I'm going to be late. I was like, I was like, I, I think I was like, it was only like five minutes late, but late is late. It's never a good thing. Let's be real. Um, and I'm like, I'm like, that's it. This is the last gig I'm ever gonna do. Never gonna happen again. Because all because I was late like five minutes, and I was like so pissed and like overwhelmed with myself. And I got there, and like the stage manager, like, dude, just take it easy, man. Just you're five minutes late. This, yeah. this is only like tech rehearsal. You're you're not gonna go on for like another ninety minutes. Just yeah. Breathe. All right. So I, I went. I spiked everything. I got dressed. I relaxed. And I, one of the best shows of my life. And still to this day, easily one of my top five performances. Oh wow! Afterwards, everyone's like, everyone's like, oh dude, that was so awesome. And even like at the beginning of the year, the school contacted me. They're like, we want you if you're going to do a tour again this year. We want you uh, to come, uh, you know, put us on your schedule. And of course, COVID happened, so I had to, you know, reschedule with all that. But just the same. And I'm like, you know, it, it's because you get put up in the moment. Um, but again, you know, that, that's proof that it's like, it goes from being, you know, your hobby to your livelihood. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So. I have to take two more people and then, and then I'm out. So I'm going to, guys, I'm, gonna, good. I, I, I'm uh, good talking to you, man. I'm, I'm sorry stuff's going so hard and, uh, I'm glad no we problem. could help it all. Same. Uh, have a nice night. Uh, you too. Here, I'm gonna guys. I'm just so everyone in the waiting room knows. Uh, I'm gonna take Pearly and then Hood be down. Uh, really quickly, and then I'm out. I gotta, I gotta take it off. But I'm gonna take. Early. Hello. Hey, I think I was trying oh, to get, get you in earlier, and I just yeah, yeah, I yeah. Know. It's no problem. It's no problem. I was looking for L, and I took Lee in. Um, how's it going? It's good. It's good. How's your stream, boss man? My what? Your stream. How's the stream going? Sorry. Uh, it's going good. I, I'm having fun. I was almost gonna do um, uh, what what's it called? No. Um, cyberpunk. Uh, cause I'm like, oh yeah, 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 I got that. I haven't really played it yet. I've created my character, but that's about it. 
uh, and I, uh, I wanted to, but I was just like, you know, maybe I'll just like do a mellow flying thing. Uh, so that's oh, hell yeah. Those are the best. Just vibe out. So, uh, how, how are you doing? Good, good. Just chilling, you know, drinking, smoking, watching uh, Whitest Kids. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So, do you have a question? Same old, same old. But, uh, hold on. Overhype it. Give it one, but, give it one second. Uh, like, yeah. Whenever it's loading, it takes a little bit more. Uh, do you have a question for for the for Doctor Semajor Crane, Twi mm. Twitch pilot? Any life problems got you down? I don't know. I have a few, but you know, I uh, I'd rather. Thank you. So I don't know. Much I like to deal with my life problems. Huh? Which, sorry. Uh, no, I was saying thank you to someone. Oh yeah, I got you. My bad. I was gonna say uh, I don't really have any like deep questions, any deep voice questions. I guess I kind of deal with like that stuff like on my personal i guess i don't know i just had like oh, a, yeah. a of, funny story instead of this this whole professional time that we got right now uh, yeah <laughs> i don't want to waste the uh, therapist time all right uh no, what, what, what's your story uh i used to deliver pizza and i, I basically accidentally caused a home invasion one time while i was just trying oh, to geez. give someone their food oh jeez. because uh so this is literally like this is like the first time I uh, like delivered a pizza because basically they they take they uh, they let you go on like a run with another driver and you basically just watch them deliver a pizza and you do that like once and then they just like throw you out into the world so this was like my first time like actually like doing that so basically like I have to deliver to this little like subdivision and uh, so I I walk up to their porch and I got their pizza and I, I ring their doorbell. Uh, I knock on their door a few times and nobody shows up. And you know, this is my first day, so I didn't really know what to do. So I was like, okay, well, there's some guy, their neighbor sitting on his porch over here. So maybe, you know, I fucked up and I'm at the wrong house. So I yell at this guy and I'm like, hello. I'm like, hello, sir, did you, uh, did you order this pizza? And he's like, yeah, hold on. So then he starts like walking over to his neighbor's house and there was like a their house was more like on a hill like he basically had to walk up like a two or three feet like uh height in elevation to get to this hill and as soon as he tries to walk over like this little incline i'm like oh god this guy's fucked up <laughs> like he's so drunk yeah it's like 5 p.m he's too hammered but so this guy walks up to his neighbor's porch and he literally fucking opens their door and just yells like in their house like the pizza man is here i'm like what did i do <laughs> he's trying to solve your problems for you you're like a guy yeah he's trying to it's like oh no what have i done so then like the, the homeowner runs out and they're like what the fuck are you like get out of here if you do this again we're gonna call the police so I was like, do it again. So then like he left and then like they were, I was giving them their food and uh, they were like, yeah, this guy's done this like three or four times. He keeps trying to break into our house. <laughs> he's like, he's just some crack addict or something. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like it was a pretty nice neighborhood. I was just trying to deliver some pizza. Hey, literally like. Even nice neighbor. Yeah, well, it was like the shitty it was like a nice neighborhood in like the shitty podunk like midwest okay. town so i was like all right probably not that many alcoholics here but i was wrong uh that's a fun one fun story i wish it was life advice yeah. of life i can't help you out with this it's, it's you just you, uh I, I can throw out a deep voice question if you want me to i don't want to damage your status quo what do you keep calling you call it deep voice question yeah why do you call it a deep voice question is that like uh i said deep boys My bad. Oh, oh deep boys like like that's the show it's yeah deep like boys it. like like zucchini boys nah, i don't go off that boys naming system i'm different yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm different obviously obviously this is the flagship show right now <laughs> But uh, no, 
I don't believe yeah. in flagship shows. That's the thing about me. I can't argue with that. But, uh... I guess if I had to throw out, like, a life advice, a life advice question, um... couldn't think of anything it's dead, think of, air, all right, all right. dead air real bad dead air alright well <laughs> thanks for calling right. in yeah 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 thank you that's about uh, all I had to say so I appreciate it thanks uh, thanks this is depressed losers uh, alright I'm gonna throw in hood be down and then call it a night uh, hood be down is back on depressed yes, losers hey, start off Apologizing for being hammered on your stream uh, and interrupting you with two long asking questions and then just completely interrupting. <laughs> Thanks, Hood Be Down. My bad. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's busy. Thanks. Ah, you. I think you cut out. I think your your audio is. Are you? Are you talking into the mic? You... Hopefully. All right, let me try this. Um, I got to keep it short, though, because uh, the in-laws are upstairs, so I got to uh, cut it short so they can go Oh, back. yeah, I also have to keep it short. But, yeah, I just wanted to say apologize. Oh, uh, no, 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 you, no worries. Thank you. Dude, no, I was hammered, and I completely stepped over you guys the entire time. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> but, I. Uh, no, I would love to get on and talk uh, shit because then the next day I talked to Zach on his stream and he was asking me about my drinking and uh, that that dad went down a rabbit hole. Oh, yeah. Do you have a problem? Do you feel like? No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> you good? No, nah, I'm good. No, nah, I'm, well, I'm on a rugby team, so I'm good. That's not an answer. <laughs> have you ever played rugby? If if someone asks you about your drinking... Have you drinking, ever played 80 minutes of rugby? And you go, nah. I'm... That could be an answer to, like, to, oh, why are you bruised up? Like, uh, maybe, you know, but, like, if you have a drinking problem, those seem like separate issues, man. I don't have a drinking problem. No, my drinking is fine. No, just I saying, mean, I'm not here to I'll tell you. the rugby, and then, you know. I'm not here to tell you you have a drinking. drinking problem. You're the one who, like, brought up that you and Zach were talking about your drinking. And then, he and, asked, and then you asked, like, do you have a problem? Have a problem. Well, yeah, you said you said you talked about Zach about I drinking, and then you're but I'm, then you're like, all I'm saying is that your answer was you're on a rugby team, which isn't an answer of not having a drinking problem. Yeah, it's close enough. Is it? Yeah, it's fine. It's, so when you become a part of the rugby community and the club and all of that, and you've been doing it for like 10 years, it's, you're fine. Uh, no, I, no, it's, you know, I'm, I'm not judging you at all. Like, um, I, I just, my whole thing is that like, you know, I got to a point where I was like, I feel like people want me to drink I feel like that's like a thing that like society's pushing me to drink and doesn't necessarily make me better so you know, I get a lot of anxiety from it so I don't need it and oh no dude then I'm fine no cause like yeah none of that happens <laughs> this is like a bit right no, I'm actually like. What, what do you mean it's a bit? No, it's no. Cause no, you just no, I, you just said I'm fine, and I heard like a beer crack open. Is this seltzer water? Okay, all right. Is it? Well, technically, yeah, it's truly seltzer. Oh. I, I gotta lose weight. The quarantine with no rugby, I gotta lose like 20 pounds. <laughs> dude, I'm up to like 240 right now. Dude, I'm up to like oh, dude, I am out of shape, dude. My miles are like real slow. So. Uh, Alright, dude. Your in-laws are upstairs. 
You got some seltzer to drink. I've... Right. Well, the whole point, I was just trying to call on Sam. Sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. I would like to talk to you about comedy on a future stream on a oh, later yeah, date. Totally. I'd love to call it and, you know, talk to, you know, about comedy. Because I did, you know, the whole, you know, domestic abuse bit was way uncalled for. No, I, I mean, like, I think, you know, we had an interesting conversation. And it's, it's like, it's not that, like, it's like, I feel like it's not that it's it's that uncalled for it's that it's i mean like it wasn't flushed I, out i feel like it's the the thing it it's kind of the the mistake that like a lot of young comics make it's kind of like you know we were talking about this earlier about like uh about doing edgy stuff can can be a crutch and like it can sometimes people do edgy stuff in place of actually thinking out thinking about what they're saying and what they're trying to express and what the idea is and so it, it's good to like figure out what your voice is and who your personality is first like how the audience sees you that's a good point that, like, those are all yeah that's that's a really good point but yeah uh we'd love to talk about uh comedy in the future absolutely but yeah i just wanted to apologize again because yeah that was yeah i met my heroes and i literally shit the bed so no no, no. yeah i pretty much made an ass of myself but you couldn't get any worse uh look man i'm nobody's hero <laughs> uh, violence no, is definitely right, right there <laughs> no you're good man all right yeah i do gotta run um, have a nice night. I'll donate some more money. I'm going to go make money. Keep flying. Uh, I love, actually, I love the flight limit of uh, Fraser Streams. I think these are yeah. great. Yeah, I so. have a lot of fun. Thanks for, thanks for uh, listening. Thanks for calling in again. Guys, I, I, I'm going to uh, say that to everyone. Thank you guys for calling in and listening and uh, 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 watching me. Can I ask one thing, though, Sam? What? If you're gonna talk sports boys again, can uh, you guys actually watch some rugby and then talk about rugby, regardless okay. of your I'll, knowledge? I'll bring in I'll bring in uh, rugby next week. We're we're gonna do a little bit yes. better formatted stuff and like look, I'll be there. I love like I, I I'm the kind of guy who uh, I think that like the deal with sports is not that like you, people don't like the sports. Like it's not that I don't like NASCAR. I don't get the contact context of NASCAR. I think if have you ever been in a car at 150 miles an hour? Uh, no, I have not. No, no, and that, that's what I'm saying. It's like I don't get the the I don't get the ins and outs of the sports. And I'm not saying I hate NASCAR. I just don't watch NASCAR. I don't get like who's good. I don't get like I could watch a NASCAR race and not really understand that like i could see like the most impressive thing ever happen in a nascar race and not really get the context of it but if you understand oh, the context of something you can like see something that is completely that like no one would see looking at it and be like oh that was that pass was like the way that that this you know fucking the way that Jimmy Johnson passed this car here is a thing of no, beauty. That makes complete and, sense. And like, like you make complete sense. I and I just think that like like that's the thing with sports is there's a context to every sport and there's a a, a beauty to that and there's something fascinating Absolutely. about that and you know like the reason I don't watch cricket isn't because cricket sucks. It's because I absolutely oh, dude, don't get a, understand oh, the get rules. Oh, sprinkle the field with the sixes all those runs, four runs. I, was, I, I I played rugby, so I I uh, ended up knowing a bunch of uh, South Africans. So I learned how cricket works. Hey, hold on one second. Uh, oh, that's funny. Dude, cricket is the weirdest sport on the planet. Timmy, you should come into the the chat first. All right, no, never mind. I'm I'm signing off. I gotta sign off, guys. Well, I was gonna apologize, Timmy, too. All right, yeah, I gotta go anyway. Thanks so much for for coming in and checking out the stream. I had a really fun time. Let me check out who to raid. Uh... Movie Blab. Raid Movie Blab.
There's, there's someone I'm, I'm trying to see if MC Chris is on. Uh, let me see. Give me a sec. But thank you, though. I do appreciate oh, no it. No problem. Let's see who on the friends list is that? Oh, Choom's on playing bug snacks. I'm gonna raid Choom, guys. Sorry, oh, it's an easy oh, raid oh, for oh, me. Play. Playing bug snacks. He's got a call in number. I would call in, but I gotta run. I'm actually like, uh, I gotta go. I'm supposed yeah, to be yeah. down by 9 30. The in laws are upstairs. You get upstairs. No, they gotta go downstairs to go to bed. So I'm oh. in there, like, oh. living room. <laughs> Good night, guys. <laughs> Good night, man. <laughs> 